Welcome to Trades World Podcast. Today, we got one of my homegirls in the house, and she is really my homegirl because I have tummy envy. She has the best stomach in the industry. You might have seen her on Here's the Thing, Insecure, or Family Time. My homegirl, Tangerine Martin or Tangerine Thomas, because she married now, is in the house. So stay tuned so that you can meet my friend the way I know her. Courtney, that's Tangerine. Hi, Courtney. Please How you do? You. Nice to meet you, too. Okay, I'm doing good. All right. <laughs> Let me show you right. I'm Courtney. She's such a woman. Like, we got to change the energy. I've been dealing with men. Oh, okay. Well, here I am. Hi. <laughs> that's all she likes to have on the show, though, is men. Oh, it's because it's, I had a show, I do that, too. <laughs> I mean, it's because that's all I know, honestly. I don't brothers? know about yes, eight. Oh, well, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. It ruins life. You know, I just don't know a lot of women. Are you so, a tomboy? I still am. Okay, okay. I still think of <laughs> not a n- so, we, <laughs> so we can say nigga on your show? Okay, got it. No. You can say anything you want. Yes, okay. you can definitely say anything you want. Okay. Wait, no, Courtney, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Courtney bleeps me out from time to time. But I don't know if you watched your husband's show, but Courtney was like, why are you doing that? I sexually harassed you like the whole time. And I you, said, you, you sexually harassed Courtney? No, no you. you. <laughs> oh, I didn't know how to watch his show. I thought it's on your Patreon. Oh, no, it's on YouTube. It should be up on YouTube now. I'll send it to you. Oh, I th- yeah, he told me it was your Patreon. So I was like, oh, well, then we, we, released, a, er- we released the shows early on Patreon. Oh. And then when it comes out, we release it to the mainstream. Oh, OK, cool. I was like, I'll never see it, but it'll be cool that we both did the show. <laughs> OK, cool. I'll check it out. I make a few dollars. Yeah. So look, I'm horrible. I already did your intro before you came. So we just kind of jump into stuff. And I just like to have conversations. Okay. Cool. It's not really like interviewee, interviewee. But yes, the whole time your husband was on, I kept talking about how bad his wife was. And when we got off, Courtney was like, why did you sexually harass his wife like that? And I said, because if it was you, he'd be real offended and want to fight. Clayton don't pay me no attention. He's used to it. Um, I don't think he likes it because he'd rather that attention go to him, but he is used to it. So thank you. I'm flattered. You're beautiful too. Terry and Tangerine. Terry and Tangerine. Hey. And your middle name is like Cher. Something yes, right. Cherry. C-H-E-R-E. But it's, you know, French for um, my love. What is it? My Cherry Amour. Yeah, my love. My my love. Ch- tangerine. Cherry. In French? My Cherry Amour means I'm my something love. I can't remember. But yeah, yeah. C- Cherry, it's Cherry. Tangerine Cherry, Thomas. It's ridiculous. That's I don't crazy. know. My name is ridiculous. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> of course you do, Cherry. Courtney asked me, do I remember where I met you at? I was trying to think of that too. And I, I do remember. Okay, please tell me. I kind of giggled. Well, this is going to sound wrong, but we were at a hotel. Ow. <laughs> it was the lobby. And I was with who at the time was definitely the love of my life. And Tangerine turned around and said, I love black love. That is so beautiful. That sounds like me. That sounds like me. And we all got on the elevator together because it was like a rooftop party or club or something up there. Oh, wow. And you have been consistently just as sweet ever since. Thank you. Thank you. I love that story because I was looking through my brain and I was like, where did I first meet her? Because... I know that I watched you on TV back in the day, but I couldn't remember we were both on Sunset Gower lot at the same time when um, the Parkers and Moesha and City Guys, I was on that lot every day because I was a stand-in and a recurring character on City Guys. Then I became a stand-in and a recurring character on the Parkers and I was always sneaking to the Moesha set to steal food because they had a soul food cook over there and we didn't have that at City Guys. We had a um, Caucasian lady who liked to heat stuff up in the microwave. And I was like, this ain't right, y'all. So I would just walk over there to Moesha. So I was like, did I meet her at the Sunset Gower days? Or it okay. could have been, but I think it was waiting to get on an elevator. And okay. the ex who I was with is now deceased. Um, we lost him. And I, you were one of the first per- people that I thought of when we lost him. Wait, what's his name? Bird. Or do you want to say? Bird. Oh, yeah. Bird. 
bird. <gasps> oh, cherry. Yeah, and we, I don't know if it was COVID or whatever, but I just remember that you were so sweet. Bird. Yeah. Don't make me cry. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you cry, but I know that he's oh. smiling down because you were always one of his favorite people too. He always yeah. said she is so sweet. You guys, mm, and you guys stayed such good friends even after you weren't together. Yeah, I, that was, that's my dog. Yeah, mm, girl. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to change the mood. Girl, all right. How you doing, Courtney? I'm, I'm good. Uh, you're going to find this crazy. I don't know if you ever, you hear this a lot, but I was actually just watching Family Time, and this is real talk. I don't know when the show comes on, but every time I turn on Bounce TV, it's on. <laughs> Hilarious. And, and so the one episode I just got done watching, and and, and I apologize to Clayton, man, because I don't, because I'm married, so I don't, I don't do this to other people's wives. But you had a red, a pink dress on. You just had a pink dress on, and and it had like cuts on the side. And I'm like, I said, God damn. <laughs> so I said, I, said, I said, I see what Cherry be talking about. And so I'm like, whoa. And so you came. Thank and, you. Let me just say something. All the women on that show, I mean, y'all talking about the baddest bodies. Damn, all the, the, the uh, thank you, Omar's wife. I keep forgetting the name. Angel the Conwell name. is the leading lady, she's married to Omar Gooding. I'm Angel's sister, the lipstick lesbian Rachel, and our other sister is Paula J. Parker. So, I'd like to think that we are the voluptuous. Uh, sitcom cast because most people have to be toothpick thin to be on TV unless you're on a reality show like the housewives of Atlanta they get to be thick like all the love and hip hop people they get to be thick but when it comes to booking something that's scripted they're always looking for people that don't really have the curve so I love the fact that we get to be curvaceous on our show I love and, that yes and you guys are doing a very good job of being <laughs> curvaceous on that show I was like, let, me, let me tell you why his reaction is like that right because when Clayton came on I was like yo his wife don't yeah, <laughs> so, I have tummy envy. Like you have the best stomach in Hollywood, hands oh, down. You mean before the quarantine? Thank you, Boo. Thank Even you. I'm a I'm nine pound he pounds heavier right now. I had gotten up to eleven pounds heavier, and then I said, Tandrine, what are you doing?" So I went and bought a yoga mat, and I started doing my little workouts, and I started to um, cut back on the snacks and the trips to the refrigerator. But thank you. Uh, I used to have a, a flat stomach. Thank you. No, her stomach is ridiculous. Like three days, it'll snap back. As I was saying that I had tummy envy, I was eating Doritos. And I was like, <laughs> why you ain't never going to have what she has, Cherry? That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, it is all diet. It's 80% diet, 20% fitness workout. So, and I don't really make the time to work out. So I try to cut back on things. I drink my little water with my apple cider vinegar in it which doesn't taste good. So sometimes I put some honey or some real maple syrup in it. But yeah, sacrifice. Do you yeah. remember this, the pink dress you, that I'm talking about? He's like, but don't change the subject, bitch. We, we're talking about this pink dress with the slits on the side. I don't, but I know that there was at least two seasons where they put me in dresses like almost every scene. I'm like, but I'm just coming over to borrow some sugar. They're like, put on that tight dress. I'm like, okay. So I don't remember which one, but I um, appreciate you remembering. Yes, I do. Cause see like me and my sons was watching and me and my sons, we only watch TV. Like they five and seven. We only watch like wrestling five? together. Yeah. You were five watching me at five in my yeah, little we dress? Were, we were watching and then my wife comes in and we all quiet. And she's like, what y'all watching? Because, you know, we only watch wrestling together. And she then she looked and see. But, but look. um, Thank you for sharing me with the family. Okay, Courtney, I, I'm going to give you time to go back and think. Tangerine, tell, <laughs> tell me about your journey as an actress. Are you from L.A.? I am. Born and raised in Inglewood, uh, bred and fed. Yes. Hey, what, 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 what's the neighborhood? Um, it will be called the Avs. It's actually Century Heights is on the sign. So it's kind of a bougie area. I mean, I say I'm from Inglewood, but we had like a five bedroom house with a pool and a jacuzzi, two stories. And I had a, my dad built me a two story clubhouse in the backyard. So like, I don't come from like super, super, you know, had to she make a bread long. sandwich. Yeah. But um, I did catch the bus, you know, through all these other neighborhoods. So I knew all the Crips and all the Bloods because I had to take the public bus to get to my private school and my magnet schools and all that on the other side of town. So I was very, um, I tried my best to be hood. You know, I knew all the gangsters. I wanted to make sure I was friends with both sides so that I never had anybody starting fights with me. So I was always really well loved and 
started to act when I was in first grade. I did the play in school that you have to, you know, you all have to do some kind of multicultural play or whatever. I did the play and that was what, you know, that's when the bug bit me. And I started doing after school programs for free that had plays in them. And then I started taking, um, I, do, I did auditions and started doing plays at the Inglewood Playhouse. And that's where I met F. Gary Gray and Rick Famuyiwa and uh, was working with them on the, as little kids on the, in the plays. And then, um, you know, I just always knew that I was going to be an actress. And then my mom was like, well, you know, you should go to college because it's the most fun you're ever going to have. And you're going to get all your summers off and you're going to make all these connections. And she never went to college. Nobody in my family went to college. And I liked her reasoning. She didn't say, you know, that your degree was important. She just said, it's going to make you a lot of connections and you're going to have a lot of fun. And this is your chance to, to experience that for the family. So I went to college and I majored in TV and film production and management because I knew I was going to work in the industry and I wanted to know all sides of the camera. And I knew I was going to have my own production company to hire people of color, which I do now. It's called Citrix Cinema in, in, Incorporated. Um, I pledged Delta while I was in college. I was homecoming queen. And then I got out, started working at Paramount Pictures as an intern. And, you know, I, Got, I had a full-time salary job there, paid every Thursday, made really good money. Parents were proud of me. And then I said, you know what? I'm not acting. I have to quit. And they were like, wait, wait, you have your own phone extension in your own office and you have people reporting to you, PAs and interns reporting to you. I was like, I know, but I'm writing out SAG contracts for actors that we're booking and I want to make this money for coming in here for an hour. I want to do this in front of the camera. So I quit, took a leap of faith. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills, um, but I'm going to quit and I'm going to do what I want to do since I was six years old. So I quit. Never looked back. And that's beautiful. How many years has it been since you quit? Um, ooh, I don't know, because I'm only 29. So with my Hollywood 29 age, I would have to say that it was um, <laughs> okay, so, so nine, nine years ago. Nine years. <laughs> You've worked on some amazing things like Insecure. Can you tell us how that role came about? Oh, my goodness. Insecure. First of all, I had a web series called The Celibate Nympho Chronicles that was on YouTube at the same time that Issa Rae had Awkward Black Girl. And both of us were doing shows about relationships and things not working out. But she went way harder than I did. She did more episodes. Her episodes were way longer. She had a lot more people, you know, on her crew. And she had a website, she was selling merch and everybody would be like, girl, you're just like Issa. You know, you got to sell merch, you got to do this. And I didn't keep the consistency. I didn't keep going with it. So, but I always admired her and I was so excited when she got a show on HBO from that web series. I was like, whoa, go ahead. So my dream was to work with her. And so I did a vision board and I put a picture of Issa on it. And I wasn't sure why I put the picture because it wasn't just about like, do I want to be an insecure? It was more like, I want to finish what I start. I want to, you know, take something that was a smaller scale and make it bigger like she did. Like, I just admired her. So I put her on my vision board and then didn't even remember that I did that. But my vision board is on my phone every year so that I'm constantly looking at it when I'm grabbing my phone. So I got an audition for Insecure and I was like, oh, cool. And I went in there and I did a great job. I thought actually got coached for it and everything. Didn't get the part. My other friend did. Okay, no problem. Got a <laughs> second audition that season. Went in there completely different character didn't get the part my friend got it third audition that season didn't get the part fourth audition that season I was like so when I walked in there for the fifth time that year I said what's up y'all I, I was so comfortable I could have worn pajamas and flip-flops I was just like it's me I'm back I don't know why y'all keep calling me in if y'all not gonna book me but what y'all want I was so comfortable and the season was about to be over and I auditioned and they laughed I booked it and it ended up being their very last day of shooting that season. And there was lobster and a, a whole salmon on set. They had food trucks on set. They had, um, they were just part, they were in party mode. I was like, this is the best experience I could have had. My part was so minuscule that you won't remember it. It's, it was within the show, within the show. You know, every season they, they film a whole series of some throwback show or some stupid show. Like this one is Finding Latoya this season. Um, and they're looking at uh, clips of everybody's looking for this girl named Latoya while they're watching TV in Insecure. My season last season was the the Kevin show, the Kevin, the Kevon show, Kevin show. And it was Bill Bellamy and um, what's her name? Eric Alexander. It was these throwback 90s characters and it was a throwback 90s show. So I'm in that. But you, if you blink, you'll miss me, but it's on their website. But to me, it was just more of this was my last chance to make my vision board um, 
come to life. This was my last chance to get to work with Issa. She was great. She hugged me. She took pictures with me. She embraced me when she saw me at the rap party as if I had had like a major role. Like she was like so good to work with. I got to have conversations with her. I got to talk to all the other people that I'm, I've known in the industry for a long time. So it was a great experience, but it was such a five auditions to do the tiniest role possible, but to work on the best day they could have possibly booked me on on their set. So long story to say that. Oh, so would you tell an, an actress who's frustrated because she keeps getting called in, she feels like she gets close, but she ain't got there yet. What, what would you tell her? Don't give up. And, and don't, don't go in there like it's your last opportunity. Because when you first, if you have an audition for a long time and then you go for an audition, you have a desperation about you. Like, I need this. My rent is due next week. And if I don't book this, I'm going to have to move back to Kentucky. But if you go in there more relaxed, like, I'm what they're looking for. I've trained for this. This is a great role for me. They have a void. I can fill it. If you go in there like that and you, you don't need the job, you'll book it. And if you don't book it, you'll book the room. And I've, most of my jobs I've gotten from the second time they've called me in or the third time they've called me in because I booked the room the first time, meaning that the casting directors and the producers loved me, but they gave it to their cousin or they gave it to Megan Good or they gave it to Vivica Fox, which I've ha- happened to me so many times. I read for... Th- uh, the game, and then they gave it to Brandy Norwood. You know, I I read for things, and then somebody with way more credits and movies gets it. But the room likes me, so they call me back for something else. And so, if you give up, you don't get that something else. That's absolutely true. If we love you, we keep calling you back in and in and in. Okay, Courtney, you you gathered your thoughts now. Your head right. Yeah. So when you now was about that, that pink dress. Yeah, when you was wearing that pink dress, seriously. <laughs> that 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 episode, you were actually on set with your husband. And mm-hmm. so I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I've been on sets as extras and stuff. I mean, not for me, but just watched extras. I don't know nothing really. When you wore that pink dress and your husband is there. Yes. Like, did he just say like, damn, or, uh, can can you even say that anymore? Like, I don't know what the me too thing. Well, the- it's so funny because I, I, um, I did, there's a video on my Instagram where I was wearing a tight, like light blue dress and he was looking at me and I was filming an ins- a snap. An ins- it was a Snapchat back then. And he looked at me and he was like, damn. And he smacked my butt. And I said, oh, I'll smack it again, baby. And he was like, no, 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 not on camera, <laughs> not on camera. And I was like, you're, you're my husband. It's okay if you smack my butt. And he was just like, mm-mm, mm-mm. and that video I still posted because it was so cute that he like clammed up when the camera was on. But um, I think that, I think that he's happy that I'm attractive to people because yeah. nobody wants to be with somebody where everybody's like, Ugh, you got to explain them. Okay, listen, my wife is coming. And let me tell you, it was a hard year and I just needed to get married. Like, you don't want to have to explain your wife. So I think that um, he's okay with it. And as long as it's just for work, like there's certain outfits I put on and I'm going out without him and he'll be like, Mm-mm, where do you think you're going? And I'll be like, babe, I'm just going to go on my girl. Nah, nah. And I'm like, dang, let me go put on. Remember being a teenager, you have to sneak an outfit in the car and switch <laughs> clothes. You know, sometimes I got to do that with my husband. Attaboy, Clay. That's what he's supposed to do with his wife. But, I mean, that whole set is just a bunch of beautiful black women. And I was yes, like, God yes. damn. No, hold on. I shouldn't say that. But I was like, man, you know, that's just, just like really nah, good. No, say it how you felt it. God damn. I mean, it's really, okay. Yeah. It's okay. So, and it's run by a black man. And he's okay. empl- it's employed mostly his black relatives. It okay. is the epitome of supporting black business. He he owns the entire studio that we shoot it in. And which oh, I think that's is family Kyle Evans, the one who created Jamie Foxx oh, show okay. and Martin yeah. show. And for your love. I'm sorry, not for your love. Um, I was on that show and I just said that credit for this no reason. Something. Love that, that girl. Love, love that girl and in his, the cut. And his son is on that show too, Junior. His son plays the son of the Omar yeah. and Angel, yes. And oh, okay. um, the first thing he put his son in, I was on a, sh- on a show called The Rev. And that show we did four episodes. Bentley was the director and the writer. And he wanted his son to get into acting. So he said, Tangerine, I'll have my son be extra in this scene. Can you just tell him what blocking means and show him where to stand and what to do? And I was like, yeah, I got you. So I was talking to him, whatever. And now look at him. He's series regular on Family Time. What does, what does blocking mean? I never even heard of that term before. Oh, that's where you walk to make sure the cameras pick you up in the right angle. Because if you just walk it like you do in real life, the camera might get the back of your head or the microphone won't get your voice because it's over here and you went over there. So you have to know where to go at the right time for certain lines or it's a wasted take. I love that you guys brought that up because I teach acting. And one of the big things that I've noticed is now that we have like Instagram models coming into the game, Mm. that's one of the things that they don't know. They don't know anything Mm. about walking. They don't know anything about finding their light. 
They don't know mm-hmm. anything about their mark. And I think that everybody who goes into a craft, you do need to educate yourself a little bit because there's nothing more that directors hate than you getting on the set and being clueless. They don't yes. want to teach you. It's time to work. But it's why time they, to why work. they hire them in the first place then? Because they're cute and have followers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they don't, they don't assume that they're not going to know what blocking means and what hitting your mark means and what finding your light means. They assume if you're in the industry, you know what you're doing, but you don't find that out in the audition room. You don't need to, you can't tell if somebody doesn't know that in the audition room. You don't find that right. out until they're on set. And they all call themselves actresses. So what <laughs> advice would you give to those um, actresses? <laughs> she put the air quotes up without putting the air quotes up. Right. Those mm, actresses. <laughs> <laughs> who don't really have on the set of a real production experience. Cause I won't say, cause you know, they'd be on set too. Yeah. I always tell people who ask me for advice to learn your craft, take as many classes as you can. Even right now with the shutdown, there are classes being offered online and then get into some productions. Cause you can't get better at something if you're not doing it. And there's always colleges who are doing productions and they need somebody to be in their films you can shoot stuff on your phone and learn that way, which, you know, is also great because when you're going back before you post it, you're like, oh, the back of his head was showing this whole time or, oh, the sound quality is really bad because I didn't uh, speak up. I didn't project my voice. And so shooting things before you ask somebody to pay you to do it, you should have done it a whole lot of times. It takes 10,000 hours to be an expert or something. So you can start, you know, earning those hours by looking through Craigslist ads, looking through Mandy.com ads, looking online to find people who are looking for actors. You can hook up with people who do sketches. And if you're a cute girl, you can ask them if you can be in the sketches. You can learn a lot from looking at their sets. But get good at it before you start saying, how'd you get that part? Who's your agent? As if you're going to be able to call my agent and have them just start representing you and you have no credits, no experience, and no training. No, start with the classes. Start with the experience of working with people for free and getting good at it. And then you can probably make your own productions if nobody's hiring you. And again, you're still getting better and better and better. Absolutely. And your production company, tell us more about what you got going on. Ah, Citrix Cinema um, is my production company. And I chose cinema because cinema is so nostalgic. You know, um, nobody's really shooting on film anymore, but it just makes me think about a time with, you know, the old school time when I really fell in love with TV and film and Citric because I'm tangerine. Um, so back in the day, I shot the Celebrate Nympho Chronicles. It won some awards. It starred Malik Yoba, Tony Rock, Rodney Perry, uh, Loma Wright. And it was just my journey of dating, being single and telling guys that I was waiting for marriage because I knew there was some comedy in that. It was based on true story because I was celibate for like three years and dudes were like really with it until they really realized I was serious about it. And then they would just start coming up with excuses of why they didn't want to see me anymore. And I was like, oh, this is sad, but it's funny. So I made it into a show. And then um, most recently, a couple of years ago, actually, it's been I shot a a zombie, a zombie comedy called The Life Undead. And I did my own stunts in that and shot, I fought some zombies, a horde of zombies that was coming at me in the parking lot, which is, you know, always fun. Who doesn't want to beat up some zombies? And Clayton was also a character in that. And we had a great uh, banter. He did a fight scene with a bat against the zombies. It's awesome. Um, and then recently this year, since the shutdown started, I've created two series that I do every week. Every Tuesday, I do a open mic variety show called Tangerine's Top Talent. And I have people call in and get on camera with me from all over the world. It's on my Facebook and my YouTube every Tuesday at three o'clock because Tangerine starts with T. Tangerine Top Talent at three also starts with T. So Aww. they've called, they call in from Amsterdam and Africa and Canada and Italy and all over the states and they perform whether it's with a saxophone or they rap or they sing or they play the piano or the vibraphone which is really a xylophone to us but I've just enjoyed meeting all these people from around the world who want to come in and show off their talents and my viewers get to then find out ways to follow them or support them I'll put their cash app up or I'll give away a few hundred dollars to my favorite person for that week I've had pole dancers on this Tuesday this pole dancer was lit she was super flexible had both her legs behind her neck bent over twerking so I had to put her cash app up and bless her um, <laughs> yeah my show you never know what kind of person is going to come in and call in but that's a that's on Tuesdays and then on Thursdays the show that everybody seems to be falling for is my dating show called shoot your shot and that is where i take one of my pretty friends who people have been asking me about in my comments oh when i post a picture or a video and they're like oh hook me up with her i'm not hooking you up with her shoot your shot come on my show so i bring her to the show um she calls in and then i have space for up to six people to be on camera so all these contestants are answering questions just like the old school dating game show 
and she picks a winner at the end. But I put them through a rigorous questioning before that. And the very final round is a physical performance uh, round where they have to either sing or a song or write or a poem or bust a rap or they have to do a push up contest. Or I mean, we've done some <laughs> like yesterday's show, they had to shoot how many baskets they could get in 24 hours, but they're all calling in from home. There's no basketball court. So they had to take the time to make a court out of something. So there was boxes, there was trash cans in a bathroom. This guy uh-huh. borrowed his neighbor's trash can, like, and he had a, like a golf ball, like it's just been so much fun to come up with and write these sto- shows and produce them each week. And, um, and um, yeah, my followers have gone up like three times as much as they were from the last three months. So I think people are rocking with the uh, Citrix Cinema and I'm having fun and not just yeah. sitting at home doing nothing during quarantine. Definitely. You're amazing. I saw the Sunset Park. Uh, oh, I did the reunion for that movie, yes. the Sunset Park. Yes, yes, yes. Which was, they approached me because they liked the platform that I use for my interviewing and for my shows. And they were like, can you do our 24 year reunion? Because we made the movie 24 years ago. I was like, of course. So Fragile Star and Talon and all those guys. Uh, Anthony Chicago Hall was the one who approached me for it. So he was on there. It was, it was incredible to do that for and them. Those are all the homies. That yes. Series world too. So I think it's so amazing. Like I'm so proud of you, and I'll never forget mm-hmm. your Nympho Chronicles. Is that what it was? Celibate Nympho Chronicles. The Celibate Nympho Chronicles, because you got in bed with Tony Rock. I did get in bed with Tony Rock, <laughs> and then I looked on Instagram as soon as I got out of bed with him and saw that he was in pictures with another girl, <gasps> and um, that he was uh, that he had a girlfriend, and oh. I was like, but I thought we were engaged, and he was like, remember, don't tell nobody about us, and I'm like, but. <laughs> getting married because <laughs> I mean all of my girls can relate to being in a relationship with somebody who didn't yes. want other people to know about it and it's like nigga I'm cooking for you every day like I'm over here I'm, <laughs> I'm sucking and, and you smashing and when we go out in public you act like we don't know each other like what am I doing <laughs> I thought, I thought we was building towards something. And it's always like, nah, you know, I like to be a private person. They always hit you with that. I want to be private. I don't like people in my business. Really? Or is it because six girls at this party are all messing with you at the same time? Like, so that's why my the party is all messing with them at the same time. Yeah. So that's why I did the, the uh, Celebrity Info Chronicles. That's hilarious. How do you feel? I, I'm sorry, Courtney, you, you got it together yet? <laughs> I'm new to all this. And I, when I first met Cherry, I told her, I said, I just didn't think that, you know, it's, it's realistic to believe couples in Hollywood could be faithful. I didn't even think it was like a requirement, you know. Um, I just thought it was just like, you know, hey, you know, like you just said, I'll just in bed with Tony Rock and, you know, go back home with my husband and I'm God, mad no. at Tony Rock for getting in bed with somebody else. I, you know, I just thought it was just like an open swing fest. So, I mean, what is it like for, um, you know, being married? Um, well, I never said anything about faithful, um, but I do know that I like, I like being married. I like coming home to the same person. I like the... I, we're best friends. We laugh hard as you can at things together. We get in bed to go to sleep and just start giggling. We'll say one thing and then we'll just, it'll feel like we're on stage. Like we laugh so hard because we both are, we have the same sense of humor. The little things make us laugh. And so we just get along really, really well. It's it's a trip to be married to your best friend. And then also, because when I wrote the Celebrate Info Chronicles, like I said, I was celibate for three years. And then I wrote the series much later after I had been um, back sexually active, but I started by saying, I'm going to go on a hundred day dick talks. And I started tweeting about my dick talks. And so that my tweeter, my tweeters, my Twitter (laughs) followers could hold me accountable. So I'll be like, okay, you guys, it's day 10, but this guy wants to come over tonight and eat me out. You know, if I let him eat me out is, do I have to start over or can tomorrow be day 11? I would ask this on Twitter. I talked to a girl that told me that oral sex does not count as, um, as, um, did you just see the smile though? She told, she told me. Um, well, that's why I asked Twitter because it was a mixed review. Some people say, no, it's not sex. It's no penetration. And other people were like, the word sex is in the description. It's oral sex, Andrew. And yes, you have to start over. So I would tweet these things. And that's what gave me the idea to make my web series based on those tweets. And in the midst of that 100 day dick talks, I had already been friends with Clayton for like a year and a half. And we were just friends. We worked together in radio for Foxhole Radio with Jamie Foxx. And then I had done a workshop in Valentine's Day and it was talking about, you know, list of things you're looking for in a man. And I listed them and I was like, oh, wait, Clayton has got a lot of these things and I'm just calling him a friend. Uh So I started to tell him, you know what? 
I'm going to stop shooting you down. I'm going to give you a chance because you're not a bad guy. When I actually look at it on paper, I just met you in a situation on Fox All Radio with all these comedians, Corey Holcomb, Rodney Perry, Louis Dix, all trying to get at me and talk mess about me. And I just like, get away from me. But when I look at it on paper, I'm like, okay. So in the midst of that 100 Day Dick Talks, I'm talking to Clayton as, a, as I'm dating him. And I'm like, you know, when I get off this 100 days, I'm going to be looking for somebody to have sex with. And, you know, so he waited the hundred days plus the two years that we knew each other. And so I say all that to say that we were really good friends before we started dating because he deserved, he deserved it he deserved <laughs> because we had been friends and then he waited the hundred days. And then I actually went further than a hundred days before I actually had sex. And so we're, we just get along really well. And so now that we are both on the same sitcom family time, it's like we work together. Then we shoot sketches together. When he had a podcast, I was his co-host. So it's like, That's he can't get rid of me. Um, no. He can't get rid of me if he tried. And when I shoot stuff, I put him in it. And he's, you know, he's a big supporter of the two live shows that I'm doing now during the pandemic. He's all in the comments. I put the comments on the screen. Everybody knows us as being together. So, um, I dope. mean, I just, I like my friend. I like That's my dope. friend. I got a follow. I got a follow up though. You said you work with Corey Holcomb. Now he's a Chicago guy like me. What was that like working with him? Because he hardcore. <laughs> yeah, Corey is a mess. Um, Corey and I were really close as well because I was one of those women who I was raised by men. I didn't have eight siblings that were brothers, but I had two male cousins that I thought were brothers because they grew up with me. And then I had my dad and my uncle who was living with us. And I had all this male energy and I knew how men thought and how they were in relationships, which I think is why I'm very like when I date a guy, they, they were like, oh man, you're not like most girls. Like I never once asked Clayton, so what are we doing? Like, well, I'm coming over here. What, what is it? Like, I would get up after I got some and I would go home. I didn't try to spend the night. I didn't try to lead a note. Like I was, I was like a nigga. And so, fucked his head up, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so when I met Corey and I heard his comedy, I was like, yo, these bitches are mad at this club because he's speaking so much truth and he's speaking to them about how women ain't ish and, you know, about the abortions they had like he's spitting stuff that women don't want to hear but i found it so funny so to get to know him um and the real him is a super nice teddy bear he's super super nice he just really understands women and he's really good with comedy so me and clayton had been stuck in the house for two months and then Corey called and said can you guys come to our come do my talk show um this was i think the first friday in may of this year he has a the show that he does 5150 every tuesday but he started a new nighttime talk show during the pandemic called 5150 industry showcase i think and it's got like a couch and a band and a the background looks like you're looking over the downtown la like but it's a green screen it's a whole pr production and he was like can you guys come be on the show we had not left the house but we love Corey so much we're like we gotta go we Aww. love Corey, so we left the house went and did the show but yeah he's a good friend of ours he's a really good guy that's amazing tandry you talk about dating and now married in hollywood what do you think are five key things that everybody who is a wife or wants to be a wife needs to know? Ooh, that's a good question. <sighs> that comes because we just had a woman on our show earlier who wrote a book and it's called Kingdom Wife. Is it Kingdom Wife Chronicles? Kingdom Wife. It's called Kingdom Wife Manual. That's okay. what it is. Okay. And so I was like, uh oh, you're writing a wife manual. Like, I fail. I don't even have to open it. But if Did it you say you life, fail? Quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and you said in Hollywood. Okay. The yeah. first thing in Hollywood or not is you have to be friends. You have to get along. Um, a lot of people fall in lust with somebody they're attracted to, but they don't really enjoy their company. And they're sitting in the driveway, taking a deep breath before they go into the house. Because they're like, oh, I got to go in here with this bitch. Like, you don't want to be in a marriage like that. You want to actually look forward to coming home. Like, I pull up and I'm like, oh, my baby's truck is here. Okay, let's go see what we're going to watch on Netflix when I get in the house. Like, you want somebody that you like being around. So you want to be friends. Um, it's really, really important that you are able to talk about anything with each other. And I think that it's weird that some people can't talk about things with each other, but you can like let them eat your groceries. And it's like, okay, you guys are that intimate that you, you, you know, your tongue has been in every crevice of each other's body, but you can't tell them, you know, that I really hate when you do this or, you know, when we go out and you act like this towards me, I really need you to, or, Oh, that outfit, mom. I mean, mom, that outfit, babe, like 
that's not flattering. This is a better look for you. Like you have to be able to talk about anything with each other. So that's important. And then as far as the Hollywood side of it, you have to know where home is and where the heart is. So there's going to be times like I've done love scenes. I did a whole series, Zane's the Jump Off, where I had a whole full on man and we had sex scenes and there was a love triangle with another young lady. I was with Clayton when I shot that. I actually asked his permission before I did the the audition. Oh. Um, so you have to be thick. You have to have thick skin and be comfortable enough to know that, okay, she's a great actress. She looks like she's in love with Eamon Joseph right here because he was the lead on that and he's the lead in Snowfall right now. You have to be able to look at that and be like, okay, she's just kidding. That's my wife. Like she's right here. She loves me. She doesn't, she doesn't love him. She loves me. And you have to understand that because Hollywood used to be called, um, it's Hollywood because that's the wood of the magician stick. So it's all magic. It's all fake. It's all an illusion. So you have to realize that. So that's the most important thing when you're dating somebody in the industry is to not take things personally. They're going to be out late at night at an, an, an industry event. They're going to have people of the opposite sex flocking to them for attention. And you have to be secure enough to know that. How do you audition doing a, a, a love scene? especially a threesome like you just said. Uh, it was a three-way love triangle, but we didn't do a threesome oh, in the oh, show. Oh. It was just his, he, he was, he had a girlfriend and then he had me that he really loved and me and her kept getting into it. But um, the audition, you, you say the lines and you have the look on your face, but you don't actually have to get in bed with anybody at the audition. Oh. You just have to be sex, sexy enough for them to be able to picture like, okay, she could do it. And then they want to see you without like, without a push-up bra, like in fitted clothes, like what does she really look like? So we can imagine like, okay, if she's naked, do we still want this person to be on our show? Cause you know, everybody looks different when they take their clothes off and everything kind of just falls where it really falls. So, that is so true. they just want to know, they just want to know, does it, so does it stay did, there? Did they actually, I've actually had an audition where they asked me just wife beater and no bra. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm a little girl from Punky Brewster. I don't think I should go to that one. <laughs> Well, what was it for? Because I know when model calls, they usually say, you know, no makeup, natural hair, and they usually are in like shorts and a wife beater. And a wife beater. See, I'm okay with model call. I don't know. Model call, like, it just, I just felt like it was so, mm. It felt dirty. Then you, yeah. you, you trust your gut. So that yeah. was probably some, 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 something shady. I yeah. was like, wife beater, no bra. Like, does it have to be white? And they were like, we prefer white. And then they were going to have a hose to get, it's going to be a t-shirt contest when you got there. And they're like, oh, boo. I, go, so I, don't, I don't know, but I just felt dirty about it. I was like, so did you go or no? No, mm -mm. I went down. I was like, can't do it. Good for you. It's so interesting because there's so many um, people that I know that were in trouble when the Me Too thing came out. Not just the big Harvey Weinstein people, but people that I used to call friends or do that, that I still call friends that are in casting that were getting called out for all the slimy stuff they were doing to get girls under the guise of this is going to be a Drake video, or this is going to be a, you know, a Meek Mill party or whatever. But it's like, you got to put some of that on the girls too, because you have the right as a woman to be like, mm, that don't sound right. I don't yeah. think you need to be squeezing on my booty while I'm wearing lingerie at this audition. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, if you're telling me to come in, in a string bikini and turn around and bend over and you and all the guys in the room are touching my ass, like at some point I got to be like, mm, I don't think this is important. So does that really happen? Yeah. Yes. All the time. I mean, girls are giving head at auditions. Girls are getting <laughs> bent over at auditions and the project may not ever come to pass or this person may or may not even be involved in this project that you think you're auditioning for. And even still, if it, if it is, like, do, do you want to be in a video that bad? Do you want to be in this short film that bad? Like, do you want to be in this major movie that bad? Because it's, you know, it's on the bigger scale, too. So and the casting awesome. couch thing is real. Absolutely. Yes. Because, because cool. men are pigs. And when they get in a position of power, they still are the same pigs. They're, they still want to see how many girls they can, you know, put the notch on their belt with. Absolutely. It's real. I have to say, when I started producing, of course, I'm behind the table with a bunch of men. Certain girls would come in and they would giggle. And I'd be like, you know, what's going on? And one time this one girl came in. She was beautiful. She was good. And she left. And they're like, no, nah, she can't have a part. Well, why? Then they start telling the story about where she had been the night before and the knob that she was slobbing on. And I felt yeah. really bad for her because she yeah. really did good, but she walked in so confident. And now I know why she walked in so confident because she just knew that part was hers and she didn't get it simply because yeah. she slept with him. 
Well, that I thought happens. she did that to, to get the job. And she they think that that will help them, but it doesn't. And I, the same thing, a friend of mine was producing a project and the writers had an audition. And when this friend of mine, this female friend of mine came in, two different people whispered over to the producer and were like, um, no. we fucked her. Um, we don't want her on this project. Well, you're thinking as one of these girls, like, oh, I fucked the producer. I'm definitely going to work with him. It's not the case. No, not at all. I, I fought one time for this one girl to have a job. And she got it because I fought for her. But when she got it, she messed up probably ever working with the guys again because she started sleeping with one mm. of the lead actors. Then she wanted to fight one of the actresses on set. And I was just like, what are you doing? I had to fight for you to get this job. She wasn't ready for Hollywood. That's too bad. I mean, That's too bad. It, it just it hurt my heart because she's a beautiful, young, stupid ass girl. And you got to cut that out, Courtney. But I was like, you can't stand her name. I fuck with you so hard. <laughs> I know her. And I fuck Lord. with you so hard for saying her name. <laughs> I almost said the name of the girl I was talking about, but I was like, I don't even want to do that. But you it's said so her hard. name. I love it. You don't just keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and and that and she is very feisty. So I, I know that you're telling the truth because so she so, so when you ladies hear fight. this, when you ladies because I never heard two women talk about you know, I never heard this before. This real talk. Usually I hear men talk about, yeah, you know, we did this, but I never heard two women talk about. It. So when you hear like like Russell Simmons, for example, is getting a lot of heat and he's saying I passed lie detector tests. I was probably rude to these ladies, but I wasn't I wasn't what they saying that I did. So when you and now so when you how, how do y'all feel about that? about Russell in particular, which was interesting because the second that his came out, he stepped down from all his businesses and put them all like in his kids' names. So it's like, that's not what an innocent man does. Like he immediately was like, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to be investigated. I'm just going to step away. So if anybody sues me, they won't get the money from me because I'm going to put the money in everybody else's name. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. But I don't know. I can't say anything about Russell himself. I have done a table reading at Russell's house, but I was pregnant, so... So he didn't mess with you. He was like, oh, somebody already hit that. Somebody already hit that raw. <laughs> the thrill is gone. <laughs> I worked with Russell too. I was an audience coordinator on Def Comedy Jam one season. He seemed like a cool guy. And I was like, oh man, he didn't flirt with me. And then somebody was like, because he doesn't like women. I was like, oh, okay. But, you know, so to then flip to um, him being in all this mess, I was just like, oh, dang. But when you listen to the stories of what people say, which is important to do, like you, you see the people that get accused but it's important to read the story of the accuser because their description will help you understand. Was it actually assault or was it a suggestion that was like super persistent and the girl was just like, okay, fine. You know, you're not gonna give me a ride home until I give you some, okay, fine, let me bend over. Like, you know, which isn't taking it, but it's obviously that the girl didn't want it and you, she felt like, well, this person hired me. They're in a position of power. I don't want to disappoint them. I don't want it to be weird when I get back to set. So let me go ahead and give him what he's pressuring me for. Like this, every situation is different. So you want to actually read or listen to their story. And then you make your decision on, is this true? Did all 60 of this women make this up? Or, you know, is this now, person? Are, what you're describing right there, that's very inappropriate. But is that considered a crime? On, I, I would think it was, I don't know if it's considered a criminal act, but it's definitely, you could definitely get fired. I don't know anybody that can work a job like that, you know, so what you just described, like pressuring somebody to. Which is what, it, what happens most of the time. And a lot of women can relate to being pressured into yeah. sleeping with somebody that they didn't really want to sleep with because they thought they had to, or because they were just like, okay, nigga here, which isn't the, really the way that you, I mean, it's the same concept of buying a girl drinks. You're buying her drinks because you want to get to know her, but you're really letting her loosen up so that she gets rid of her inhibitions, which is the, her ability to be like, no, thank you. Yeah. So that you can take her wherever you want to take her and sleep with her. It should be illegal to buy somebody more than one drink and then sleep with them because she's not able to actually say no and she's not able to like push you off of her, but that's the norm. You always buy a girl drinks then you go sleep with her. But is she really giving you permission? Is it she goes to the doctor and says, you know, he took it from me and they test her blood. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, she was impaired. So there's a whole can of things that are open 
when you get into what do you need, how sober do you need to be for consent? And so I don't it's the know same thing when it's why, your boss. I don't know why these men, I don't know why men will like drunk sex any or drunk, well, let's just say like the drunk pussy. I, that, yeah. ain't, that ain't cool. <laughs> I usually think it's men that, you know, don't have much oh. control. Good point. Good point. That's or they're I just mean. really unattractive and nobody will give them any. So they're just like, well, because that's, you know, you, you guys always want to show. I say you guys, I'm putting, I'm stereotyping, generalizing. generalizing. You guys want to show us all the money you have so that we can be like, oh, hi, hey, Courtney. And then, no, you please know. Please don't put me in buy, this car. <laughs> don't buy all the drinks. And then you're that. like, oh, what kind of car you got? Okay, I'm going to come home with you. And then you start changing your mind. It's too late, bitch. You're here. I'm not going to give you a ride home until you bend over. You see why I love her? She sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember reading a couple of little stories and they were more like, they weren't, the people weren't assaulted. It was more like per- pressured or persistent. And this person is, has a power over you or they hired you and you don't know how to be like, nah, I'm just going to call a cab and go home. So I used to be on the road. I can't say who, but I was on the road before. She said, she said, yeah, but I ain't gonna say nothing. Okay. I'll tell you, but I hopefully. But I, I, well, no, no, no. This is not with him. I was on the road with him at the time, and okay. and so they used to. Uh, my hope, one of my boys, he actually got in trouble. But he was. This is actually when he was with. Our, but he got in trouble for some other shit. But anyway, um, I always looked at it because I was I was just the road guy. So I actually, when they got done, I would actually walk the girls to their car and make mm-hmm. sure that they got to the car safe got left in the cab and they and they last time we seen them we walked in they she got in the car and, and left and everything was cool nice i get i no, it wasn't that, it wasn't nice because when i got home my was well, she with my wife then was my girl and my, and my mom was like why are you putting if you didn't do nothing why are you doing that because if they do have ulterior motives they gonna say the last person I lived with that dude right there, and then then it's on camera that you was with that person. Now you don't put yourself in a situation. But see, I was with guys that were, you know, in the '90s and the early 2000s was different. Kick a bitch out the room and all that kind of crazy stuff that you get yeah, done. They showed that in the Straight Outta Compton movie. And so I was like, well, I don't want to bring no heat on that because that ain't no. So I would just make sure that the last thing they had, you know, experience was me walking them to the car. The, the last dude was cool. That's what I wanted to make sure. You're like, such a gentleman. No, nah, I ain't going to say all that. I'm an asshole too, but I just want, I'm for trying to protect everything. And they like, if mm-hmm. you had nothing to do with it, you stay out of it. So I just. Somebody, I, no, somebody needs to be a gentleman. And that's the kind of the thing with the whole, these crooked cops. That, that same philosophy is, okay, I see these cops over here beating this person. Yeah. And some of the cops might even be of color. But they going to stay out of it because they don't have nothing to do with it? No. You can, it's okay to be nice. It's okay to be a gentleman. It's okay to be like, um, I'm going to make sure I can get you to the hospital because what he just did to you was illegal. Um, and I'm going to try to help you out. Like, it's okay. And I don't yeah. want to say that nobody was doing anything illegal, but it's, it's just, you know. Courtney's just a nice guy. I don't, don't want to say. Sweet, but then it's again, okay. I, then I have to think, ain't nobody ever kicked me the fuck out of a hotel room. Like, why would you even put yourself in this situation to be used like that? Again, you turned down the audition that asked for a wife beater and no bra. Some girls would not have turned that down. And those are the girls who would be kicked out if they didn't cooperate at the hotel or when they finished cooperating. Bye, bitch. Thanks, bitch. Like, you know, there's no respect for somebody. So that whether they got their way or not, bye, bitch. And that's see, right. my whole thing is that's not cool because... If you once you treat them that He's way, adorable. No, yeah. no, 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 I, no. I'm paranoid. That's what it is. I'm you very, have daughters yet? Yes, I have a daughter. Oh, that's why. Okay, you well, have a wife and daughters. Yes. I get it. I, but I'm, I'm a, I live a very paranoid life. I'm like I'm crazy almost. So I just be always thinking about what can go wrong. Mm-hmm. So I always think like that. So I'm like, man, you kick somebody out, you kick a guy out. You know, it's gonna be hell to pay. You know, any anything, you kick anybody out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just always thought like, damn, that's. Here, let me just make sure you get to the cost straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's really sweet because it also helps to prove the state of their mind when the last time you saw them. Did they look disheveled? Did they did they look like they were rushing and scared? Or did they just look regular? Like it works both ways because you can be the witness. Like, they okay. thought like they thought they were spending the night and they were like, nah, we don't, <laughs> we don't want nobody spending the night. So you got 
so poor, they, weren't, poor ladies, but they weren't raised with enough guys to know to get the hell up out of there when you finish mom like i said right. if that's all you came for get it and go get home, <laughs> get home. so tangerine what do you have going on after oh you glitched up what'd you say Oh, I said, what do you have going on after COVID? Are you like the rest of us kind of waiting to go back to work or? Um, it's so funny because the show Family Time, we uh, shot eight seasons and we usually shoot every spring. And for some reason, last spring, we shot a second season that summer. So we don't even have to shoot for this year because we already have a new season that's going to drop this fall. So I don't have to worry about getting back to that set. We, we, if we shoot, I think, nine more episodes, we'll make our 100 episodes. So they're talking about bringing us back after the COVID to get at least to get another half a season in for season nine. So I guess that'll be after COVID. Um, I'm booked to open. There's a, new sh there's a new comedy club in Tacoma, Washington, that my friend Nate Jackson, who's a comedian, and my frat brother, because I'm a Delta Sigma Theta sorority member. Ooh, he's the bruz. And um, what'd you just do? I missed it because I was no, covering. That's the, that's the rock. That's the rock. Oh, I was like, what is he throwing up? You don't know Delta. Um, <laughs> <laughs> better watch it. No, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> he's opening a brand new comedy club in Tacoma, Washington, where he's from. And it will be the biggest comedy club in the Northwest region. And there's only like about six black owned comedy clubs in the country. And so he's booked me to perform on his opening weekend in July, July 9th through 11th. So even though I can't tell if COVID is over or not, I'm going to go to Washington, I guess, and perform. And it's going to be social distance. Like it, it seats 500, but they're only going to allow 150 people to get tickets. So I'm going to be there next month. And then my two shows, uh, the Tangerine's Top Talent on Tuesdays and the Shoot Your Shot dating show on Thursdays, is going to continue to go on on my Facebook and my YouTube page. And people have been asking me to please keep it going even after COVID because they're having so much fun. So um, I'm to the point where when somebody calls me for an audition, I'm just like, I like working for myself. Like I've had so much fun producing my own stuff. I don't want to like have to dance for anybody else. So I just want to keep making my own content and, you know, I'm monetized on all the social platforms so that I can make money from the house. And I'm so proud. I'm, I'm not looking forward to going back into the Hollywood hustle and bustle of, can you give me a job? Can I work with you? Uh, you, you about to start another season and you ain't put me in it. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to go back to that tangerine. I want to go back to Citrix cinema, uh, CEO, President Tangerine. Yeah. So whether we're in COVID or not, I'm having a good time creating content. I love it. And tell them where your pages are so they can find you. Ah, you can find me on all social media platforms. If you know my name is not spelled like the fruit, it's spelled T-A-N-J-A-R-E-E-N, -E -E just like right there, T-A-N-J-A-R-E-E-N. -E -E so it is Tangerine on YouTube, Tangerine on Twitter, Tangerine on Snapchat, and on Facebook and Instagram, it's official Tangerine because... I have a second page, but official tangerine, but start typing it in. You'll see me pop up in something orange probably. And I do try to reply back to almost all my comments. So I don't read, oh, should I do that? What are you doing? No, I'm just saying like, I don't really own a lot of orange things, but I put this <laughs> orange thing on for you today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I love, I love, you know, I got, my husband brought me these Nick Incredibles because they're Those orange. <laughs> my orange, like I'm always getting orange gifts. So I, whether I like the color or not. Orange, but I put it on for my baby. I was like, why is she rubbing her shoulders while I'm talking? Should I rub my shoulders? Okay. But yeah, you find me on everything. And um, I try to engage really um, a lot with my uh, supporters. So I, I, I talk to you. I learn your names. And then when I do my shows, their comments go up on the screen. I read them out loud. I say hi to them. They're, you know, I'm, I really, really want to connect with people. While we're sitting at home, I'm having the best time just getting to know people that I would normally just see as a name on it. Like I'm getting to really, really connect. And that's been so fun. I'm really so proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank for Thank you, being. Cherry. I'm so proud of you too. You don't went out there and been a boss. You're a producer. You over here, like besides this show, you, you know, you, you've always done your thing though. You've always been a boss. Like people don't realize they're like, Oh, Punky Brewster. Like, no, no, no. She's a boss. She's, she's moved on. I don't, I don't know. I think I saw you said they're doing a reboot of it on your page. Yes. We got picked back up for That's so season. crazy. Cool. That is so crazy cool. You still at the same age. So, I mean, you could play the same exact character in the same time frame. Like, it's ridiculous. You Our age. characters are amazing. We definitely have evolved into women. I think you will giggle when you see me. Um, there's some secrets that I can't tell. You won't be shocked. But okay. But we'll enjoy. 
Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Cause like I, I don't know what you're drinking or eating, but like I said, you look exactly the same and it's weird. Thank like you have not aged. It's great. Same as you. I'm over here doing the same thing you're doing. Hey. I the Doritos I was eating before I did the intro. Hey, <laughs> please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is the official Cherry Johnson. That way you never miss one of our Cherry's World podcasts.